This video was requested by carbonated <laughs> The fuck was that? I'm scared now. It's Drewski McGillicuddy's 13 Ghost Movie Review. Hey everybody, it's Drewski McGillicuddy, and that's right, this is a patron requested review. It caught me off guard. Uh, Carbonated Life messaged me the other day and said, Hey man, can you review 2001's 13 Ghosts? And I said, Shit! I ain't sat, seen that movie in a fortnight. Uh, that's right, a fortnight. I'm probably exaggerating, I don't know. It's been a really long time since I had seen this movie. Uh, and it seems like a lot of people have forgotten about this movie because I looked to see if there was any movie reviews and sure there was some smaller channels that reviewed this movie but the only uh, big shot that I seen was uh, uh, Mike and Jay from We Watched a Movie so I watched their review to make sure I wasn't fucking crazy because I fucking love this movie I'm not gonna beat around the fucking bush we're gonna talk about uh, first thing I wanna talk about is back when this movie came out now I don't absolutely remember if I saw it at the first run theater but all it took was one time for me and my friends to go see this at the Danbury Dollar Saver Cinemas and we was hooked I, I had to have seen this movie at least 10 times in the theater we were addicted to this shit because you know there kind of wasn't anything I mean this is when the 2000s stylistic kind of whatever started happening because this is kind of like a, a stylist it's like uh it's like an mtv horror film it, like it, it seems like it belongs uh on the mtv uh, but back then when they still played fucking music and shit but uh yeah i don't know i uh, me and my friends absolutely love this movie uh why i haven't watched it in years uh i have no idea maybe it's because it's been at the bottom of my uh horror collection because it starts with the letter t Come to think of it, I haven't watched the Texas Chainsaw Massacre in a really long time either. And you know, I'm almost done with a certain franchise, so... Uh, but anyway, we're not here to talk about that because we're talking about 13 Ghosts for the last fucking time. I'm not going to tell you again, okay? So we start out the movie, and there's this evil Cyrus character. It's the guy from Scarface, I think, that gets uh, Tony Mantana started on his... Uh, plot for world domination. Anyway, this guy plays this evil, wannabe Satan looking motherfucker, and he's built this uh, big fucking machine thing, and he's collecting all these ghosts. And the beginning of the movie is him collecting the ghosts. He's got Matthew Lillard there, uh, and they're trying to get the Juggernaut, who's this big, scary ass looking motherfucker. And that's the thing about the ghosts in this movie. Uh, they might not all be absolutely horrifying but they're all pretty damn scary and the designs are pretty cool i mean it's 2001 though keep in mind because I, I, when i was watching we watched a movies review because i don't remember if i said this in this take or not but i watched was looking for reviews and they're the only uh big name channel that i saw that reviewed this movie so it begs me to question uh, where you at, Lee McCoy? Where you at, Cody Leach? Come on, you sons of bitches. Uh, anyway, what was I talking about? That's right, 13 Ghosts. Don't even know. I wasn't going to tell you again. Anyway, so they're, they're, they're trying to entrap this ghost in this containment unit that's made out of, uh, Latin words written on glass. So apparently it's a spell and he can't leave once he's inside of it. And they got to use bait and they got a truck full of blood it's like the truck that they used in the 2000 was it 2013 that the evil dead remake came out anyway the evil dead remake it's the truckload of blood that they used to spray the blood in that movie they used it to catch this ghost and it's kind of elaborate it's kind of far-fetched it's like where where exactly does one get a fucking truckload of blood i mean i know you're rich but where could you go and just be like, here, I got a whole bunch of money. I need a truckload of blood. But anyway, that's beside the point. The point is, uh, this David guy played by Matthew Lillard, he's psychic. 
and he can go find these ghosts by touching the ground, and if somebody touches him, their life flashes before his eyes, stuff like that. So they collect this ghost. And then it cuts to uh, Tony Shalhoub, who's Arthur something or other. I don't know. We'll just call him Tony Shalhoub. Uh, Tony Shalhoub's character, who lives in this little dinky-ass apartment. He has uh, this live-in nanny. I guess it's a live-in nanny. It's like, what? How can these people afford these live-in nannies? You know what I mean? If, if, if he's down on his luck and he's living in a shithole apartment, maybe she doesn't live there. I don't know, but she's the babysitter, basically. And they're all sitting around getting breakfast ready. Uh, you got Shannon Elizabeth and you got this little kid who's slightly annoying, but not really annoying. I mean, he's kind of cute sometimes, and then sometimes it's just like, oh my God, somebody slapped this kid at him. You know, why are you one? Never mind, we'll get to that later. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're in this cramped little apartment, and they're talking about, you know, there's a lawyer at the door, and like, oh, we're going to have to move again. He's like, no, 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 they don't know what's going on. So the, they open the door, the lawyer explains, your uncle died. They watch this little uh, video on the computer. It's very advanced for the technology they had in 2001, for all I remember. Uh, but they watch this little video where Cyrus tells him, uh, I didn't give a shit about you when I was alive, but now that I'm dead, uh, you can have my house. And, uh, you know, I just want to uh, make up for uh, being an asshole all these years. So they're like, oh, well, yay, we, we, got, a, we got a big house, so maybe we'll go check it out. So they go check it out with the lawyer, and uh, yeah, this guy, he kind of reminds me of Anthony Jeselnik, but he's not funny. But he looks kind of just like Anthony Jeselnik. Uh, it was bugging me, I even had to look it up to make sure it wasn't Anthony Jeselnik, and there was some other guy that looks like uh, the guy that was like the villain and never backed down or some shit like that. Anyway, that doesn't matter. So they get to the house and here's this guy trying to get a flashlight. He's trying to get in. He's got to check the breaker because houses all over the triquad area are without power. And the lawyer tells him, hey, look, buddy, you're going to have to come back tomorrow. And he's like, there's about 5,000 people without power. I can't do that. And then you, you realize, it, oh, that's Matthew Lillard. So hey, Tony Shalhoub's like, oh, it's fine, it's fine. He can come inside, look around if he wants to. It's no big deal. So they go into this house, which doesn't really look like a house. It just looks like, a, I mean, looks like a, a series of windows. With, like, possibly four. It's a glass house, basically. Uh, and it's got the Latin all over the walls and their containment spells. Because uh, you soon find out that there are the 12 ghosts. Or, what well, I didn't even tell you they were looking for 12 ghosts. They were looking for 12 ghosts. They finally had caught the 12th ghost with the Juggernaut. So they lock all these ghosts down in this basement. And then the thing is, uh, Cyrus has to get his family there. And then he basically gets them trapped in the house. And the funny thing is, uh, Matthew Lillard finally, you know, comes clean. And once he goes into the basement and realizes there's these ghosts, he goes up and tells Arthur, like, hey... Your family's in danger. You got to get out of this house right now. And the lawyer's like, oh, he's, my office told me about him. He's, uh, don't listen to him. He's crazy. He's like, yeah, that's right. I'm a whack job. But I'm telling you, you got to get your family out of this house right now. And he doesn't, of course, because the movie has to uh, go on. And uh, the lawyer thinks that his job's done and he goes to collect his money. And when he picks up this briefcase full of money, it sets the, uh, trap in motion, so to speak. Because I don't think Cyrus ever necessarily intended for this lawyer to get away with all of his money. Uh, so he went ahead and locked him in this house too because the house seals itself off and then random doors start opening. They keep separating our group from each other. So it's very interesting in that aspect. And like the aesthetics in this movie, like the architecture of the house and the imagery from the house is all great like the, the performances are all solid the only problem i really have with this movie is well there's two things i'll bring that I'll bring this other thing up later uh because like, like i said the ghosts all of the ghosts in this movie pretty much look badass like the one in particular is the juggernaut and uh or the one in particular the couple in particular is the juggernaut the jackal a jackal! Jackal! It's a jackal! It looks like a jackal! 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 It's a jackal! Jackal! Time! 
it wasn't right the first time you said it, why the hell would it be right the next ten times? God! And for me, uh, the naked chick, whatever her name was, the scorned princess, or something like that, and then the baby with the mother. Like, the baby with the mother might be actually the creepiest fucking one. Because just looking at that, it's just like, oh, uh, oh. Uh. But, yeah. But for the most part, all of the ghosts are pretty fucking cool looking, but just there's some exceptional ones. And the only corny looking one, really, is the hammer. I mean, it looked badass back then, but now looking back at it, it's kind of weird looking. And after watching We Watched the Movies review, they compared it to uh, not Shaquille O'Neal and Steel. That's what they said he looked like. And I'll never unsee that, so now that's definitely what I'm going to think about when I think about that character. But anyway, what was I talking about? So yeah, the trap's set in motion, the house seals itself up, and now all of a sudden, Bobby's fucking missing because, you know, he's a pain in the ass. He goes down in the basement where he doesn't belong, even though his, the voice of his mother tells him, Hey, don't come down here. Uh, but then the, the hanged girl is like, No, come down here. And then his mother's like, No, don't come down here. And he's like, Oh, well, I'm just going to keep listening to a voice I don't recognize. And he's like, you guys better quit messing with me. So he's trapped down there. But the best part of the movie, because you know that lawyer, right? He's a, just a slime ball sleaze bag. So you know he's got to go. Uh, and it's one of the best segments of the movie. He's walking through the basement trying to find his way out. He even uh, takes a crack at the scorned princess and tells her nice tits <laughs> and, you know, walks past. Uh, and then the doors open and the ghosts are released and then they start cornering him he walks back and I couldn't find the video uh, footage but here's a fucking picture of it it's just so badass because it splits him the door shut and splits him in half and he slowly and it, 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 it takes its time and he slowly slides down this glass and it is fucking phenomenal like it should have won an Oscar uh, that's how good it was best special makeup effects I've seen in an early 2000s movie that's for goddamn sure and that's the thing about this movie all the effects are really good did I mention the, the, the problem I had with it yet I, see, I, I don't know what I'm talking about anyway the problem is some of the fucking editing not all of the editing but some of the fucking editing is like are you fucking here here's a good example <laughs> like what why? Like, stop it. Fucking show them. I can understand the ghost, like, disappearing when they're not wearing the glasses. But if they're wearing the glasses, why would the ghost be disappearing and then reappearing? And then why does it keep shaking and then going real close and then far away? And then, like, are you fucking smoking crystal meth? Anyway, I don't, I don't know. But besides that, the directing is pretty decent. And it's just... Somebody in the editing chair in the editing room was like, oh, I'm going to, I've been watching too many 2000s music videos or something. That, it, that's what it feels like. Oh, this is also directed by the guy that did Ghost Ship. And that's it. That's the only other thing he directed. And let me tell you something about Ghost Ship. The only part of that movie I remember is the beginning. I should probably watch that again. It's been a really long time. But no, this movie, I don't know. It's just really, really fun. From beginning to end, I have a good time watching it. I like there's I mean it's full of jump scares, but when the ghosts are as scary and as cool looking as they are, it doesn't really bother me because it's like, oh yeah, that that fuck you, you motherfucker. And you know, uh Matthew Lillard even gets busted with some jump scares and he also says, Fuck you, you motherfucker. Uh but anyway, then he accidentally sees his uh demise because uh, Maggie taps him on the back and then he sees her future which even though Tony Shalhoub was the one to see anyway basically there's this big intricate plot to get this family in this house so that it can set all these things in motion and then apparently because uh, yeah some lady pops up out of nowhere you know like, how the hell did she get in here and she you know gives the exposition up in the library where it's safe because there's one room in the house that's safe from the ghost which begs the question why don't you just fucking stay in there until they forget what they're fucking doing in the house I don't fucking know anyway uh, 
but yeah, they're in there. She explains to him that he needed all these ghosts to power this machine because once he gets the machine up and running, it's going to open the eye of hell and then the past and future evils are going to something. I don't know. I wasn't smart enough to follow it that or it was kind of dumb. I'm not sure, but you know, it, it's just a fucking movie, you know, so just go with it. Uh, so that she tells him that he has to sacrifice himself to save his children uh, because that's the only way to stop the machine from opening the eye to hell. Which turns out is a bold-faced fucking lie and that he has to jump in there to be the 13th ghost to open the fucking eye, I guess. That's how his ghost... It's the only way to make his ghost or something like that. It, 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 you know, I mean, it, it's, it's good enough, I guess. I don't know. I have no idea. It's kind of kind of complicated but it's kind of simple, but I don't really know. I don't really know. Uh, but then he's going to jump in the machine to save his children because somebody set him on this platform and there's these things doing this. And then he sees Uncle Cyrus standing there looking at him and he's like, wait a minute. One, two, and he's counting all the ghosts. And he takes off his uh, safety glasses and he's like, wait a minute, you son of a bitch. And he just runs over and he starts giving him the one, two, three, four. And then fucking gets knocked down and starts beating with the game. And that's beside the point. Anyway, uh, the ghost somehow, so oh yeah, Maggie starts fucking with all the levers. Did I mention this is going to be a spoiler review? This movie came out in 2001, asshole. But Maggie starts fucking with everything and it just starts blowing up and going all crazy, and uh, the ghosts no longer uh, are drawn to the thing because the spell is not playing. I don't know. There's a spell playing. I don't know. We're, we're, we're going to hurry this up. And, uh, yeah, so the, the ghosts come over, and they give uh, Cyrus his comeuppance. But, uh, unfortunately, uh, while all that was going on, before all that was going on, Matthew Lillard met his demise. It doesn't matter. I don't Am I getting worse at this or what? I don't know. Let me know in the comments section down below if I'm getting worse. Because I'm trying to get better, but it seems like every time I try harder, it just gets the worst it gets. I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, so yeah. Uh, the end of the movie's kind of cheesy. But, you know, what do you want? The movie was made in 2001. Uh, and it's got a certain, two th a certain 2001 charm in it, or charm to it, that other movies from 2001 might not have. I don't know. It's been a long time since I went back and watched some of those because like the, what, the Varsity Blues you know the shit that came out when I was in high school uh, this movie came out when I was in high school and like I said me and my friends fucking loved it and you know what I still fucking love it it gets three gold stars can I do three gold can I find three gold stars I'll just write I'll just put the number three in a gold star it's fucking it's fucking terrible it's, it's but if I, so, what, where, where am I? I don't know what's going on anymore. But no, seriously, if I had to rate this movie or put like one of my little fancy, it's, uh, this movie is underrated as fuck. Because look at this shit over here. Like, who do, who do you people think you are? I mean, you think just because they have choppy editing, you gotta take that many fucking points off? I mean, part of the fucking, uh, charm at the time was the choppy editing, because, you know, it was for the kids, even though it was rated R. I don't know. I have no idea what I'm talking about, but this movie is a lot better than the fucking assholes on IMDb give it credit for. So, yeah, it's underrated as fuck. Uh, so if you haven't seen it, go watch it, even though I just told you uh, all the spoilers. Uh, but, yeah. I don't know. This movie takes me back. Uh, I'm so glad The Carbonated Life recommended I watch this because it has been a criminally long time since I had. And... Secretary's probably going to be really pissed because she was looking forward to watching this with me, but uh, I had the opportunity to watch it. Uh, she wasn't home. Uh, apparently, she's going to see uh, Cats, uh, some Broadway musical down at, I guess, the Aronoff Center down in Cincinnati because uh, she's an asshole. Her and Maggie the Mermaid are going off without me and leaving me here uh, to twiddle my thumbs. Uh, so I watched this movie without her uh, being here. So kiss, uh, yeah, uh, secretary, if you're watching this, kiss my ass. Anyway, everybody else, make sure you click the like button. Let me know that it was uh, worth my time or your time or everybody's time. Uh, subscribe, and I promise I'll get better. Uh, 
and we will see you next time. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Mwah!